Welcome to Grey Tech webinar for Advanced Steel with management and basic setup being the outline for today's presentation. My name is John Bennett and I work as an application engineer and customer success manager for Grey Tech in the UK. Grey Tech is a, a reseller and software developer offering a number of solutions across many different uh, market sectors for simulation, fabrication, BIM, design, infrastructure, etc. Just a little bit of background into Greytech. Um, we're a global company and we have a number of local experts throughout the world nowadays and we offer extensive range for BIM solutions. Also, we are an Autodesk Platinum partner within Europe and the USA. And as I previously mentioned, we offer a number of solutions across many different uh, sectors of engineering and construction. Uh, we have a number of offices throughout the world. Um, I think that number has actually increased from what's on the screen in front of us there. Um, my background is from structural engineering, CAD and BIM, and more importantly today in the modern world, implementation of technologies. We are, as I previously mentioned, uh, a worldwide Autodesk partner and our software and Autodesk software is used on millions of projects by our clients. Uh, we have a vast number of employees now. I think the number is more than that now. And we have a certain amount of those are committed in R&D, developing our own products and helping out with implementations for clients. And we also have local engineers like myself working with local customers to help them improve their product performance. Just a global map there, really giving an indication of the great tech sort of footprint over the world. As I said, we, we offer a number of industry solutions um, and Advanced Steel has sat amongst those for a number of years now and with its introduction to the AEC collection last year, also becoming what Autodesk true, term a true vertical. This now means that Advanced Steel can be used predominantly within these uh, sectors and today because of those changes in the recent year we're going to try and give a little bit of an introduction to that and, and show people who may not be familiar with advanced steel but have it now part of their AEC collection that they need to set it up correctly to get off on the right sort of pathway. So an outline summary from today for today's call. Um, we're trying to look at uh, various tools and setups with inside advanced steel using the project project explorer search tools basing grouping and more importantly some of the management tools behind advanced steel uh, because it's not just a modeling system it is also a drawing production system as well So we hope by the end of today's session, you'll have an understanding of the Project Explorer, the search tools and the model views, and be able to learn how to use these and work with these tools and also the model browser. Um, there's also some other tools looking at how to control views inside Advanced Steel to make it easier for you to create your drawings and outputs and also improve the model performance. There's a couple of features and tools which are not used that often by users are probably not aware of them. So we're going to try and outline that along with the basic sort of introductory setup, some things that users should do to help them. So the first part of this is the uh, basics. So the, the basics in advanced still revolve around the setup for the template and the management system. Um, so we're going to cover that in this, this chapter and uh, sort of explain to you how you go about doing that. So management tools. Management tools sits in the background inside Advanced Steel. There's a button available on the home tab on the ribbon for you. Um, you should go into this when you first start or first get access to Advanced Steel and set up a couple of things in there which will help you further down the line. Uh, me personally, the author settings is one of the important ones that I do set up. I always recommend that you create an author value. <coughs> 
This helps track any database changes made by the user stroke client. It is set inside the management tool system under the default profile as well. It can help with the migration as well from version to version because of its entry into the database makes it available that people can see it. So as I said previously, it is found on the ribbon home tab under the settings panel. You should see a big button there that says management tools. If you select that button, it should open the main dialog to the management tools and there you'll find uh, an options button which if you press that will open the options tab and under there you should see a line that says current author in there there is an option for you to create your own it's the button on the right hand side uh, just add one in there and once you've added it into the system it actually then can be used and it sets itself under the owner text columns inside the database structure this will be whether you're in the 17 or the 18 version it should work so we normally recommend that people do this they normally create one of their own and then it transposes into the database also there is an area within the default profile of advanced steel where you also need to check that the owner text has been set to the same value it should automatically transpose into there but if it doesn't you can always go in and type it in yourself uh, we'll come on to talk about the defaults profile in some of the later slides so the defaults profile you should create your own defaults profile the same as the author the system will come with a standard one which is advanced steel um, you can either duplicate that one or create a completely brand new one which will then you can edit out as you want basically this is a series of settings in in the background in the system that can be controlled that enable you to set up what you use for primary colors for example dimension styles numbering defaults nc settings all kinds of variables that are controlled by these sort of switches toggles drop downs etc um, there are a vast number of these in the system and people do change them depending on what project they're working on sometimes people have different profiles depending on which company they're working for so if you open the management tool system you'll go to the defaults you'll see the defaults up at the top right here you select that and that will open up the defaults window and when the defaults window open you'll see the advanced steel one there is is shown in the little dark blue panel to the left of the uh, image below and there should be a copy profile button just to the right of that if you press the copy profile button this enables you to create your own a dialog will pop up and now you can enter a name when you enter the name it's quite important that you uh, don't put any spaces in the name probably use some simple representation I mean this example here was done against a, uh, an example project that I was doing for Autodesk University a couple of years ago so with that in place you apply it and it creates and then the next step is you must set it current in the system so this changes it from advanced steel to the one that you've just created when you set it current by pressing the button this changes it in the dialog it changes in the dark blue panel below so if you've selected it you set it current and then you can see it actually change on the left hand side of the screen so if you're in there and you've pressed it if you see where the green arrow is going across there it should say the same value in there when you've pressed the set current button if it doesn't it still means you're in advanced steel the original source default so with that in place what you must also do is do an update defaults as well which is a button that is either available right on the right hand end of the menu bar in the top of management tools in the, the defaults profiles settings itself or there is an update defaults button inside advanced steel under the home tab ribbon and the settings panel
Another element to do with Advanced Steel, which is quite important, is the Advanced Steel template file. Advanced Steel was predominantly built over AutoCAD, uh, and it, for this reason, it uses a DWT file. Uh, those of you familiar with AutoCAD will know what a DWT file is and will understand the principle of using these template type files to enable you to store common settings and initial setup for you to start a drawing. And in this case, we're using it to set it up as for a model template. So typically Advanced Steel comes with one of these, but obviously you might want to have your own layer system or your own layer assignment system. Advanced Steel has a way of transferring layers from the model into arrangement drawings. This process uses a couple of mechanisms and in order to do this you need to have the DWT file in place with the layers that you require. You don't have to use the standard layers that come with the system. Uh, you can create your own layer structure in here which typically clients would do or would request from ourselves to build. And there's two stages to what we call the layer assignment system. There is the object layer assignment table, which is a database table inside Advanced Deal, which can be accessed through management tools through the table editor, or the appropriate database editor, whether it be in 17, which would be access, or in 18 would be SQL. So in there, you would go into the appropriate object layer assignment table and you would create entries and they link specifically to model roles. Now what typically happens is you use a macro inside Advanced Steel, the macro assigns a layer based upon the model role which is assigned automatically from the macro. So this table provides a link between that. So this is the object layer assignment table. Here is a bunch of entries here which are predominantly working for hand railing. So I'm trying to get them onto a hand railing appropriate layer. So here I've created the entries inside the object layer assignment table. And then this is actually linking across into the layer that's actually inside the DWT template file, which I started my project from. So if I use the railing macro, it should then put the railing elements on to the AS handrail layer. As I previously said, this is a two part system. It also has an element based system as well, which is actually embedded inside your defaults profile. So where we've just created our defaults profile, it's now unique to us. We are able to go in and use the layer assignment section of that and change the layers again to work to the appropriate layer that we require inside the advanced steel template drawing or the model as it's been created from this template drawing. Here I'm looking at the plate. So a plate is a primary element inside Advanced Steel and I want it to go onto the plate layer. So I make the entry inside the management tool system that will link across to the plate layer inside the model. So another element of Advanced Steel is to do with the preference profile that links to the management tool system. Um, this is neglected a lot of the time. People don't look at it, don't realize that it's there. So when you go and create objects inside Advanced Steel, you'll see in the dialog box that sometimes the list is uh, filtered out to show certain things. Um, this, with the system, this comes with a standard uh, install for either the US, the UK, Australia etc. There'll be a country based profile. But what typically happens is people sometimes want to alter this. So you can do a similar thing like we did with the author and with the defaults profile, you can create your own. This can be added into the system via the menu buttons that are available and given a specific name. It could be relative to a company or a particular infrastructure you're working with. And with that you can then change the preferences that you see. So with this in place, um, my example here, I was working with a client in the USA who worked quite close to the American Canadian border and they're actually um, using both American sections and Canadian sections, but the installs for the preference only gave them Canadian or American depending on which install they chose. So I took this and I combined them together 
to make both of them available inside the system. And that is sort of shown below in the dialog. So you can edit this to add anything you like uh, in the preference system. I do recommend that you create your own. And when you have created it, it actually becomes available that you can actually set it under the template file. So this means that when you start a project from the template file and store the project, it's automatically linking to this preference profile as well inside Advanced Steel. Another element of the template file that's normally overlooked is units. Um, people sort of are aware if they've used AutoCAD, they're aware of drawing units, etc. Obviously, depending on which country you're in, where you're working, um, it, it is important to try and keep your units the same sort of level of criteria. So, in, especially with fractional units, um, not so much with decimal units, but again, it is important to try and keep the precision level set the same and the type of unit set the same. So in this case, I've, I've obviously used an imperial uh, setting here to demonstrate this. So with this in place, I would recommend that you sort of look at your units for both elements. The advanced still units are found under the project settings, which again is in the in the ribbon uh, on the, on the home tab ribbon, and it's in the settings panel. Uh, just look under project settings. Uh, anybody that's had training will know where that is. But you should be able to find it and just go and down, look down and look at the length unit and just make it sure it's set to the same fractional value or the fractional value that you require. And, and please check that your AutoCAD units is set to a similar value as well. It, it just will help with the way the system is managed. There are uh, units available in other elements of Advanced Steel to do with bomb templates and um, also uh, I think actually the bomb on drawing templates have their own units as well. So there are several FAQs out there on units as well. So just for future reference, just go and have a look at that. So being now that we've sort of set a few basic parameters and set up for advanced steel, we can sort of look at how this implements into the model. So this section will be relative to the model and how those sort of settings and profiles and preferences filter through into the use of this to create the model and then further on to create the drawings etc. So with this we're going to use a basic command so if we create beams and, co and columns etc inside advanced steel these are a couple of basic commands that are available and when you activate this so for example I use the beam command the beam will actually be created in the model and you'll notice that the beam actually then transposes on to the beam layer that I've set. Now in this example I've not even used the standard beam layer name, I've actually created a special one in the system and by linking it via the management tool system, a beam object, it's gone on to the beams layer. So the other part of the system is where we're using macros and we previously mentioned that we'd use the object layer assignment table that would then transpose using the model role to actually move elements on to those layers required. So in this example, I'm using a mono pitch portal frame, which I've created in the system. And with this, the columns are actually on the columns layer. So from the macro, created it, it automatically put the columns onto the columns layer because I've made an entry inside the object layer assignment table which is available inside the database. It is available to be edited, as I previously said in one of the other slides, via the management tools, the table editor there, or you can do it via Access in 17 or SQL in 2018. So one of the other things to look at is macros. Um, Inside Advanced Steel, it's possible to make a library entry inside here and set a default. Now, most people who use a macro, uh, this is a common one that comes up and it's on about stair defaults and at the foot of the stair, and configuring it either for a plate or an angle depending on which macro you've picked and setting a parameter that you require. Now, it probably comes in with a hard coded default. Normally, that doesn't facilitate what people want. So what they'll do is they'll create their own and they'll keep recreating it each time, not realizing that they can actually add a default in. 
and when you put the com in the comment field default this actually becomes the default for that particular macro before anything else that is what gets applied so here we've applied one and we've then so we created it inside the macro and then we've added it into the library via the save values button The other part of the library is to create library entries for different configurations. Now, depending on which country you're in, you might find some of these already stored in the system. So for this example here, we have a, a table entry in the library being created for a connection between two types of beams and columns. And there's a series of those available depending on what column size it is and what bolt layout it is. So with this combination, the user can then select the column and select the beam and then with that in place it will automatically apply the configuration now the configuration might come from a standards book for design uh, depending on which country you're in you'll have different design criteria for those beam combinations this section we're going to discuss the project explorer so this again takes us a bit further into using and working with the model and how we can use some of the tools inside the Project Explorer to help us navigate and work and search for elements inside the model as it's being created. So one of these elements is model views. Model views allow you to create a series of these inside the model and break it down into a number of different areas to make it easier for you to see and work within those areas as the model gets more and more complex it can become difficult to see what you're trying to work on so we can create a series of model views they're quite easy they're available under the project explorer uh, so you pick that and then you would select the uh, the model view button it's available on the menu at the top here by pressing that button that will open the dialogue and you'll see sort of four options in front of you um, in this example I'm going to pick a grid line and by picking a grid line I'm actually setting the model view to be about that grid line so when I do that it creates it I give it a name probably appropriate to the grid etc with that as the reference with that then created it should appear in the model views list and I can activate it by <coughs> selecting the light bulb so by this I sort of left click on the light bulb and the model view becomes active if I double left click it will actually align me to the view as well it will actually rotate the view square so you're looking at it perpendicular on your screen there's all little sort of bits and pieces that you can do with this so you can create a series of model views within it to break down the model you can turn on multiple model views as well now I think this is available in 17 18 definitely it does work so here we've had the view active so another element that's similar to model view is levels <coughs> now I don't always recommend that people use levels it does depend on the type of structure you're trying to work with if you've got a multi-tiered structure going up many floors I would probably recommend that you use some form of level structure within that because beams can be attached to these levels and if you change the level or have to change it for some reason the beams will move with it and providing you these macro joints at the end of the beams the macros will go with it as well because they're attached to the beams so these can become quite useful uh, I do tend to use them in conjunction with model views and create appropriate model views for the levels as well So there is an option to uh, attach uh, levels, attach beams to the levels. So you can attach and detach beams. So if the level is active, you can see by the bold text that normally means it's active. With that, if you went to draw a beam, it would put it on that level and it would be associated with that and you moved it and it would move the beam up and down. But sometimes you wish to detach a beam to it or attach a beam to it as well. And that can be done by actually picking the uh, project explorer if you pick in the bottom of it and just flip it will actually flip over to the work planes so you'll find a button at the bottom that says work planes if you press it it'll flip over and then if you hover over the level in there 
uh, right click with the uh, the menu should come up and it should say attach or detach beams and you pick the various nodal points of the beams in question um, so you don't have to have the beam on the level originally you could create the level and attach it to the level afterwards or have it active when you're creating the beams so just try and remember that so a few uh, tips and tricks regarding model views you can copy a model view as well and you can rename it so if you create a series of uh, grid line views you probably create the first one and you could copy them along providing you know the spacing between your grids and you could rename them appropriately you can have multiple views active at once I think I mentioned that earlier on so that can be quite a good feature if you're trying to look at the left hand side of a building and the right hand side of the building got a common detail between the two and you want to copy it from one side to the other you can also change a model view direction so even if you've copied the model view and say it's looking from the left side and you want to look from the right side you can get to this via a shortcut menu and change the view direction even though it's been created and set before uh, a little thing that I do extra with most clients is tell them that you can transpose it into a layer a model view is an advanced steel object and can be turned on and off by the filter system inside advanced steel but in this case I would transpose it into a layer manually to enable them to turn them on and off via a layer as well this can help later on if you're actually transposing it into say a cloud platform or something and people are more familiar working with layers and they might want to turn these objects on and off um, just to mention a level is a work plane element as well so work planes exist inside advanced steel uh, a work plane doesn't have to be uh, flat it can be at an angle a level is typically level though it is normally horizontal in the model uh, if you look for them if you turn them on you'll probably see a load of boxes based upon the origin in the model we typically advise people to try and model near the origin inside advanced steel um, you can transpose the model into different platforms by using an offset command um, another little sort of thing that comes in if you double left click uh, a model view it will activate the model view and align it to the UCS to that view uh, this can become quite useful with objects that are placed relative to the coordinate system another little tip that I always do if you started creating lots of model views you'll see the list will grow down the side so the best thing you can do is create some folders these can be added into the project explorer just hover inside the light green panel and right click in there add folder and then you can move the views into the various folders so as I said one of the advantages is the UCS and uh, one of these that I use quite a bit is a camera is placed upon a UCS coordinate so by activating the model view double clicking over the name the view turns itself on orientates and the UCS is set to that view direction with that in place I can then come in with the view active and you'll see the coordinate system altered I can come in and I can use this to my advantage to actually place a camera at the zero zero point which is now set in the middle of the view set the camera type set the parameters under the camera and then I've got my view in place which is actually uh, ready for me to do a drawing from so typically I create my model views in line with how I'm going to do my drawing output views elevations etc sections uh, so even 3d views can be set up with a camera as well another element of the project explorer is searches and queries um, so those of you not familiar with this you inside advanced steel there's a search dialogue so it's sometimes termed a query it is available under the project explorer you can create new ones it searches for all the different object types and uses a lot of the attributes so you can filter out what you want to see there are several advantages to, to using a, a query in the system it can also be used to help create bill of material outputs later on as well as part of the bomb definition so in this case here I've probably created a search for the column model role uh, element so I'm using as a steel beam as the object 
there's the element and then the naming I've gone to model role selected column save that in the search and then when I the search appears inside the project explorer again I can use the light bulb to activate it and just isolate those elements inside the model Another element inside Advanced Steel is uh, the group option. Now, in this example, I've probably got a couple of phases of a building, phase one and phase two, but they might be made up of serious different lots of steel. So typically a phase one might have three or four lots of steel to get to an area of the project that needs to be completed. Within Advanced Steel, you can create um, and a lot reference but it is difficult to create a group of those as a phase reference so there's no secondary step at the moment that's easily available so sometimes I've used this as an example to enable people to create a view of phase one of a model and they've actually basically used a query run for lot one and lot two uh, and then use that query and then use those elements that are selected from the query via the marking and then you can add them to a group and with them in a, in a group they can then be highlighted and turned on and off so another way is obviously to select the objects this is the group selection so here I've done some plates inside the system and I just selected the plates again I probably ran a query and then I've added those plates to a group now sometimes people create the groups they might want to just select those and use those to do the drawings for those particular plate sizes um, the similar thing can be done with the query as well or you can just create several queries and then add a bunch of objects to it to just for to create for a particular set of plates that query might have been for a plate thickness upon a lot size, a lot grouping as well. The important thing is also you can mark a group inside the model so you can see it. So we apply marking. You could change the color from red if you wanted to as well. Um, and then you can isolate it. So if you activate the group, it will actually turn the rest of the model off as well. And the important thing to remember is that you can add and remove elements from a group so if you select the group name right click the shortcut menu comes up and you can add and remove the elements from there another tool in advanced steel is the model browser uh, this is quite a good little tool that opens a separate dialog window it's available under the palette uh, when you activate it, it opens a dialog which is basically looking at like a, a spreadsheet type format. I suppose I would call it a table. Uh, you can add and remove columns to the table. Uh, the column titles are based upon the attributes that are available inside Advanced Steel for all the different Advanced Steel objects. Uh, this can be quite useful to have a look at the model, select an item and a snapshot, etc. See what's going on inside the model itself. So identifying objects so you highlight it in the list and then you can actually see it inside the model as well so with that in place you can also activate there is an isolation button as well to isolate those objects one of the other elements that does come into play is editing properties within certain fields you can edit properties inside the model browser you need to check this box and with the box checked you will then find that the fields will become active for you to click into and you'll get a drop down list so for material size you'll be accessing the materials database and be able to change it for that particular element without actually going in directly to the beam inside the model um, there are some other elements that are greyed out and these are normally because the those elements are being controlled by a macro um, those elements can only be edited inside the macro itself
model output is another key area to the use of advanced steel. Uh, some people call it documentation, drawings, uh, bill of materials. Basically, these are forms of outputs that can be achieved from advanced steel. In this section, we're going to primarily focus upon doing the camera drawings for the GAs and arrangement, overview, drawings, etc. So when you uh, use advanced steel, you can use it to create drawings, and this is typically based upon a, a style and then the management that controls that style. For GAs, the recommended workflow is to use cameras. Um, general arrangement drawings is the term used by some people, overview drawings, plan and placement drawings. I've heard all these different kinds of terms throughout the world, but fundamentally they all came back to the same thing, is that I would create a camera in the model. And as I described earlier on, I could create my camera from my model views and then with the camera in place, the camera can be set to go and work automatically with a standard style that might be appropriate for the camera type. This is linked via what's called a style map inside Advanced Steel. With the style map in place, this will then work with the Drawing Process Manager. And the Drawing Process Manager, you with the style map entry, looks for the camera type and then the style is assigned against the, the camera itself. The camera type style comes from the drawing style manager. The drawing style manager has the configuration for the style of how the drawing will be presented. So this is how, what objects you will see, not see, how it's labeled, etc. This style map is quite key to providing the link to enable you to produce an automatic GA drawing without having to set the camera style itself. It doesn't preclude you from changing from that and setting a different style should you so wish within the camera definition. So we just mentioned the drawing process manager. The process manager not only links to a style but also links to what's called a prototype. This is typically referred to as the border for a drawing. So many companies have their own borders and styles, etc. how they want things to look. So a very basic thing is to make sure that you create a bunch of profiles, sorry, prototypes that actually work to what you require as a prototype for the drawing type that you're doing. So if you're doing a GA drawing, you probably pick a camera type elevation. If we link the prototype into the process, you then get the appropriate prototype on a, an arrangement type drawing. Typically people have different border layouts for GA drawings, assembly drawings and part drawings. And these can all be linked in via the drawing process manager and the various steps and definitions created in there. This uh, element I do use myself quite a bit and managed to create a link between a series of drawings to process them all together. Uh, a suite of drawings can be used to process an entire set of GAs. Um, it does work. Um, there are a few limitations to it. I do find it quite useful to get a quick set of drawings out, which if you've used it back still, you know you can then manipulate the views around as you need. It does require that you set all the other steps in place first of all to enable you to create this list of processes in here and then allow for you to press a button to produce a set of drawings. That doesn't preclude that you might still need to go and edit the drawings as the process continues but at least if you've put all the steps in place, created your model views, put your cameras in your model as you're progressing through the model, at any point you should be able to get a set of drawings out even though the drawings might not be finished or be up to date or fully edited, at least you could get something visually to show to people if you needed to do that very quickly. So you do this, it's on the output tab on the ribbon, press to find the output tab, press the process button, then go and find the suite that you've created. That will then link to the bunch of um, all the camera types and processes set up in the model. By activating that, that will then create these and run the drawings. 
A little bit more on camera integration. So a camera is an object inside Advanced Steel. Typically there's a type exists. You can customize it. You can add different types of cameras into the system. We typically do this for clients. I tend to link the camera to the type of drawing that people are trying to produce at the end of the day. This links back into the drawing style system via what's called a model object. The model object then actually links across to the drawing process manager and with that in place there would be a style in there that you could use and it would automatically create the drawing. This does not preclude you going the manual route where you create a camera type inside the system and you can actually define the drawing style under the drawing style drop down menu here. This will actually override the drawing style that's shown there. If it's left as a dash it will use the one that's defined in the drawing process via the detail style map. Another element of the model, now this is to do actually going back into the modeling again now. Um, this is called the work area. So this sort of works in conjunction with model views. It's slightly different. Um, it came about because obviously people who work with AutoCAD know there are sort of limits sometimes to how a model responds if it gets quite large. Uh, so they created the work area. So uh, the best way I can equate this to is like something in Revit is where you can adjust the level of detail that you see. So like in Revit, you can have a fine level or a coarse level, and this affects what is actually visually shown. So with the work area, you can create it and you can control these elements. So the level of details, it's slightly different terminology. It's low, medium, medium with plates and high. So low is like a stick entry. If it's a high high entry, it'll be different. So here we've just got a low level on the left hand side shown, so it just shows a line. But obviously a medium level will probably show the body of the object as well. These are the white elements shown here. So medium with plates is, is just shows plate elements and high is basically what you would see in a normal model. So you can also use it to isolate elements as well. So you can turn all the other elements off outside the model view. Now the, the sorry, the work area. So the work area is just a 2D box that's created and then projects up into 3D. You can stretch it, move it around, delete it, replace it. You can only have one in a model, but you can move it around. It doesn't have to be stored. It can be recreated at any time. This does help if you use this and you activate this, especially in a large model, because it will basically turn off the rest of the model and enable you to work in a certain area and be able to rotate the model successfully. That concludes the main part of the presentation today. So I just wanted to remind everybody that Great Air Care are here to help you. We have a number of services available to help you sort out and get the best from your software. This is provided by a number of people inside Great Air delivering very specialised services across a wide range of sectors. Also, just to remind everyone that we do offer some bolt-on solutions for uh, Advanced Steel, Revit, and we have our own design software as well, which does actually link into Advanced Steel and Revit. So in this connected BIM workflow world that we are now in, these tools can help you get the best from your system. And also a final reminder that we are an Autodesk Platinum reseller selling the full range of Autodesk products. If you wish to follow this call up or this webinar up, please uh, reach out to myself or Tom over this. Uh, Tom's probably the better person to contact initially. I tend to be rather busy with things, um, but we look forward to hearing from you and hope we can help you out customizing your system. That concludes today's webinar and presentation. I hope you found it informative and hope it can give you a few pointers to getting off on the right foot and starting using Advanced Steel as it is now part of the AEC collection. Thank you for your attention.